Hello everyone, and welcome back to Advanced Grammar from the Islamic University of Gaza, an online uh, uh, course from the Islamic University, the English uh, department. Uh, we continue our discussion on uh, the gerunds and the infinitives uh, from uh, our textbook, Understanding and Using English Grammar by Bitti Azal. And as usual, I, I start the, uh, uh, the session on, uh, by uh, giving you statements that have errors. This is a question you will be having in your quizzes and final exams. Uh, uh, these statements all contain errors. We need to highlight to find the error and fix it. In this class, these issues are related to gerund and infinity. What I want you to do is to pause the video and to try to read the questions, to spot the error, and to try to fix it. And then later on, when you listen to the whole lecture, you go back to your statements and double check uh, how you answered these uh, questions. So in the previous class, we spoke about uh, the gerund and the infinitive. We agreed that there are certain uh, verbs that are followed with uh, the gerund, and that there are certain verbs that are followed with the, uh, with the infinitive. Sometimes the same verb, the same verbs can use either can be followed with by either an infinitive or a gerund with no difference in meaning. And sometimes uh, uh, if we change the infinitive or the gerund, the meaning uh, changes. Uh, you can go back to last time's lecture and preview the main, uh, the main issues. Here, we start uh, uh, this class by talking about infinitive of purpose, where to uh, uh, means in order to. Look at this uh, example here. He came here in order to study English. Meaning, he came here to study English. <clears throat> now, it's wrong to say he came here for studying English, or he came here for to study English, or he came here for study English. Because when we talk about purpose, we use the infinitive, not for. More examples. I went to the store for some bread. I went here because uh, 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 the note here says for can be used to express purpose, but it is a prepositional and is followed by a noun. You don't use a verb or a gerund in the purpose uh, format, like in the first uh, example. So again, uh, you say he, ca he came here in order to study English or to study English. You don't so for study English, for studying English, or for to study uh, English. But if you use for, it has to be followed. It basically means in order to, but it has to be followed by a noun as the, the object here. I went to the store to buy some bread. So to is followed uh, by the, the infinitive. Uh, uh, there are adjectives that are followed by uh, infinitive, and I'm listing some of them here. Uh, you say, we, are, we, uh, we were sorry to hear the bad news. I was surprised to see Ted at, uh, at the meeting. I'm glad uh, 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 to help you. Uh, she was sad uh, to, uh, uh, to leave early. I was pleased uh, to hear the news. Uh, I was disappointed uh, to find out what he did. These are adjectives that are followed by infinitives. And then uh, we talk about using infinitives uh, with to and and you know. This is interesting, can be tricky, but we're not going to take uh, much uh, uh, time. The, just the things you might need. Look at this sentence. The box is too heavy for Bob to lift. Originally, the sentence is, this is the rule, if you remember at school, teachers would, would say two adjective two or two adverb two. So you say, for example, he is too old to walk. Now this sentence means he is very old, he can't walk. Again, remember, remember, you don't say he is too old, comma, he 
can't work well, because this is wrong. This is a comma splice. You can't com connect sentences with a comma. You could say semicolon. You can't work. Well, okay, so go back to the original sentence. He is very old. He can't walk. It means he's too old to walk. Or if we use so adjective that he uh, is so old that he can't walk. Now, if you want to talk about something, for example, you say this car. If you, you you want to buy a car, you go out with your friend and and you find a, a car that is very expensive, that is too expensive. You say, this is this car is too expensive to buy. It means this is too expensive. I can't buy it. Too here means uh, means negative. Now, if your friend is rich and has the money to buy this car, and he doesn't like what you say, this car is too expensive to buy, he would say, this car is too expensive for you to buy, indicating that for him, it's not that expensive, or at least that he can buy it. So going back to the sentence, the box, that box is too heavy for Bob to lift. The original sentence is, it is impossible for Bob to lift this box, or that box is very heavy. Remember, no comma here to connect sentences, it's wrong. Bob can't lift it, and this is lift meaning carry. The box is very heavy, but Bob can, uh, can lift it. It is possible, but difficult, uh, uh, for Bob to lift the box. Look at uh, strong. I'm strong enough. I'm strong enough, tall enough, you say. Usually there are actually exceptions for this rule, but the general rule is that you say when you use enough, uh, adjective, adjective, followed by enough, but enough followed by now. For example, you say he is tall enough to play basketball, basketball. You say he has enough money to buy that car. So I am strong enough to lift that box means I can lift it. I have, but look at this, I have enough strength. Strength is noun, so enough comes before the noun but after the adjective. I have strength enough to lift uh, uh, that uh, box is, is, is possible uh, sometimes. Now we're using passive infinitives and 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 gerunds. Look at this. I didn't expect to be asked to his party. This is a passive form. We use the infinitive because expect is followed with to, like we said in the previous lecture. But remember, appreciate is followed with gerund. We say I appreciate or I appreciated being asked to his party. So basically the same rule that applies uh, to what follows, what verb is used here. Expect to, the passive to be asked. It's appreciated being, being asked. Sometimes in the past forms, look at this, Tim appeared, so in the present form we use to be or being, depending on whether it is gerund or infinitive, Tim appeared to have sold his wife, sorry, to have told his wife about his job promotion. Appeared to have told his wife. Originally the sentence seems he appeared, it appears or it appeared that he told her 
his wife about the job promotion. Tim's wife was happy to have been told. This is the active and this is the passive. To have been, remember when we spoke about the passive, if you use the present perfect, the past perfect, have, has, or had, plus past participle, the, act, the passive voice has to have to take the been form of the verb. He mentioned having told his wife the same thing. He appreciated having been told immediately. Tim mentioned telling his wife. Tim mentioned having told his wife. She was happy to be told. She was happy to have been told. This is not that important, but it's really uh, good sometimes to have an idea about this. So using the gerunds or the passive infinitives following need. Look at this sentence. I need to paint my house. I need to paint my house. This is the active voice. I need to paint my house. John needs to be told the truth. This is the passive. It can be used in both cases here. My house needs painting. My house needs to be painted is the passive form. These are uh, uh, not common expressions, but are beautiful to use once in a while. So my house needs painting. My house needs to be to be painted. Uh, now there are what we call the verbs of perception, like see, like hear, related to the senses, like look, like notice, observe, and listen and watch. Pay attention because this is common and it's important to understand. When you say, I saw my friend run down the street, I saw my friend running down the street. We can use both. I heard the rain fall on the roof. I heard the rain falling on the roof. So after hear and see and watch and look and smell and notice and listen and observe, listen to and observe, we either use the bare infinitive, no to, or the John, both. Okay, sometimes there is a, a, a little bit of a difference in in, in 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 meaning. If you say, look at this, I'll give you examples to clarify. If you say, I saw Messi play versus I saw may say playing these are both correct but it's wrong to say i saw missy plays or i saw missy to play these are horribly wrong if you say i saw missy play it means i watched the whole match in which missy played or at least if missy for example played for 20 minutes 30 minutes 50 minutes at least you watch the part, the whole part in which Missy played. But if you say, I watched Missy play, you only watched part of the game or part of the time that Missy played. So I only watched part of the match. Same thing when you say, I heard my sister sing and i heard my sister singing now number one if you say i heard my sister sing it means you listen to the whole song i listened to the whole song or or to all the songs she sang you, you had no choice, you liked her singing, so you kept, you know, listening to her singing. But if you say, I heard my sister singing, it means I listened to part of the song or part of the singing, and then you just ran away, jumped off the window because she, she's a horrible singer, or you had to go, you had to leave, or I don't know. So when I walked into the apartment, I heard my roommate singing in the shower. You only heard part of the singing. I heard a famous opera star sing the whole 
singing is significant here. We're using the simple form after let and help. Look at this. Let, meaning allow, is in all cases, is in all cases is followed by the bare infinitive. So you say, for example, here, you say, my father lets me drive his car. You don't say let's lets me to drive or driving. Bare infinitive, no to, no gerund. I let my friend borrow my bike. Let's go. Let go of me. Let go of her. Let him go. Let's go. Let's play. Let's have fun. Let's call it a day. Always. Now look at this. If we use help, you have two options. You either use the bare infinitive like, uh, like let or you use to. Both are correct, but number one is more common and more formal. My, my brother helped me wash my car, or my brother helped me to wash my car. Now look at this. Another expression, my brother helped me in washing my car is correct. But you don't say my brother helped me, helped me washing my car in washing, to wash, or wash. Now look at this. Allow, uh, let means allow. But remember, with allow, you use infinitive with to. For example, you say, my father allows me to drive his, his car. Interesting. So using the causative verbs, like make and have and get, we'll go through them very quickly. The causative is something like the passive, like when you make some, somebody do something. Uh, I made my brother, when you say made, the first verb for make, uh, I made my brother carry, followed with infinitive. Make is like let my suitcase. I had my brother carry my suitcase is also correct, but this, there's a difference here in meaning. I got my brother to carry my suitcase. So this is bare infinitive not to, bare infinitive not to. I got my brother to carry. With got, you have to use to. The difference is that number one, his brother, uh, my brother has no choice. Here, I asked him. And the third one, I convinced him, I urged him, I made him uh, change his mind or something. So make, it's followed with bare, the bare infinitive. The same thing when you use, I had my brother carry my suitcase. Uh, Mrs. Lee, more sentences, Mrs. Lee made her son clean his room. Sad movies make me cry. Infinitive, infinitive, no to, no to. I had the plumber repair the leak. I had the plumber, it means I, uh, I, I paid him money to do this. I asked him to do this and I paid him money for it. I had the plumber. Notice the silent B in plumber. Repair the leak. Jane had the waiter bring her some tea. She urged him. This is the causative. It's called causative because you, you ask somebody, you urge somebody, you oblige somebody, you make somebody do, uh, do something. With get, remember, the students cut the teacher to dismiss the class Early. With, with got, you, you have to use to. Jack got his friends to play soccer with him after school. Soccer is the American word for football. The passive from the positive, these are really interesting expressions. I had my watch repaired. I got my watch repaired. But if you say, I repaired my watch, it means it's not clear actually, but could possibly mean you did it yourself or you took it to somebody and he fixed it. But if you say like, okay, look at this interesting example. I cut my hair. I cut my hair, you did it yourself. Well, a pair of scissors and you a mirror and you cut it yourself. But if you say, I had my hair cut means you went to the stylist, to the barber, somebody, your wife, your friend, your sister, your brother. I had my hair cut by somebody. My hair was cut by somebody. Now look at these 
again, uh, uh, interesting issues, but this is the last uh, uh, point before we look at the uh, exercises, the sentences below, the error analysis exercise. Now, sometimes we use the possessive to modify a gerund, the possessive pronoun like we'll see in a bit. Look at this sentence. We came to class late. Mr. Lee complained about that or complained about that fact. This could be rewritten in, in a very interesting way. Mr. Lee complained about our coming late or about us coming late. Oops. So Mr. Lee complained about us coming late or about our coming late. Now the book says our coming late is formal and us coming late is informal meaning spoken basically. Mr. Uh, Mary came to class late. Mr. Lee complained about that fact. Mr. Lee complained about Mary's coming because here we have a noun. We don't have uh, a pronoun. So with the noun, we have two options, both correct, one formal, one informal. Now in your exams, you should always go for the formal structure. Okay? So in your exam, this is correct. This is incorrect because I'll be asking you uh, to answer using standard English. Mr. Lee complained about Mary's coming to class late or Mr. Lee complained about Mary coming to class late. This is more spoken, this is written. Now finally, uh, we have uh, the exercise, the error analysis exercise, again from your book. Uh, we have 17 sentences, all containing errors. Again, try to pause the video and take your time, look at the sentences, try to fix them. And if you are in doubt, you can either ask me a question or you go back to the book, you go back to uh, the, the slides here and see what sentences you got uh, wrong and fix them uh, properly. You pause the video at each frame and you try to answer the questions yourself. So if they're not difficult, they're basically based on what we just said. I went to the library for study last night. I went to the library to study. You could say for studying, yeah, because studying is gerund or a noun possibly, but to study. Barbara always makes me laughing, no. She has a, a great sense of humor. Barbara always makes me laugh because after makes, you should have the, uh, uh, the bear uh, infinitive. I'll stop here and please, if you have any question, uh, feel free to ask anytime. Good luck and see you soon.